a blessed Sunday to us. There is one word that actually is so uh, challenging, although we already have discussed this when we were reading the gospel, when Jesus allowed Peter to walk on the water. And that word is dare. No? The dimension and the aspect of faith that is daring. Here we come into contact with how daring that Canaanite woman is or was, according to the narrative. He broke the boundaries of what a Jew is as compared to a non-Jew or to a pagan. In fact, today's readings, all of the readings today, including the responsorial psalm, is a taste of what uh, the scriptures, most specifically coming from the prophet Isaiah, the theme of universalism or universality. It is in this case that we take into account that the people of Israel was chosen by God, not because they were the best of all, not because they really have something you know, unique compared to the other people. But first and foremost, they were chosen to become also instruments of bringing the people to the Lord. But this came into the minds and hearts and the ego of the Israelites or the Jewish people as something that nobody deserves except them. That's the reason why today's second reading, St. Paul was talking about the disobedience of the Jewish people, but this became the avenue for other peoples to come in, especially the Gentiles. And the most beautiful word from the prophet Isaiah into this first reading are the words that end the, the reading, the first reading, that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Now this is so very significant because we as Christians, even we as Filipinos, no, we are far, you know, far from the idea, no, of when we talk about the special, the specialty or the specialness of the people of God. But then we partake, we participate in that very beautiful vocation, because as Christians we do believe in Christ, and Christ is a Jew. He belongs to the people of God in the flesh. That is actually described by St. Paul also in the same letter, in his same letter to the Romans. Theirs is the Messiah in the flesh. And that's the reason why we are being grafted into the so-called the, the, the vine or the olive tree. I like this very beautiful idea. I always remember this because as a student back in the Holy Land, you know, there is always this beautiful you know, description of the olive tree. And then from that olive tree are grafted into the non-Jewish people, most especially the Christians. And this is something that we have to be grateful all the time. Because God's goodness actually is superfluous. It goes beyond the limits and boundaries that we may consider. Because his love is not just everlasting as the Psalms would acknowledge, but his love is for all peoples. The only thing is, the other people should also recognize God. But it doesn't be, it, has not, it should not be the reason why we look down at other people. I don't know if you have an experience as a child or parents using this particular paradigm of mas maayo po na siya. Kana bang itandi ta ba? No, and that is the very essence of today's gospel reading. When Jesus acknowledged the woman, oh woman, great is your faith. No. What would the Jewish people feel upon hearing Jesus acknowledging a pagan woman no, whose faith is great, and they, they just dissipated the privilege of being the chosen people. But then St. Paul, once again, in today's second reading, would say, because of their disobedience, we have been granted mercy, so that through this they will also be given mercy. Now, the beautiful illustration in today's gospel reading is 
the, the, the impression that the woman got from Jesus' words, which was actually an insult. It is not right for the food of the children to be given to the dogs. And here we are only just hearing the word dogs. But according to the Jewish context, dogs is an expression for pagans, the non-Jewish. But then what was the woman, woman's response? Even the dogs can eat from the scraps of the children. Magduwa man ang mga bata, di ba, magkaon? Usahay mo pa mga humitan sa mga bata ang, 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 ang iro. No? And this is a very beautiful, touching imagery because we also have undergone, we have experienced something like this. No? Labi na og di taganaan sa pagkaon, ah, malipay yung mga iring og iro. No? So, di has the misa pa mga panahon. But then, the, the, the strength of the woman's daring really bears a mark because this is something that we need to have. To say and to express our faith, it is not about bragging about it. Kung manghambog ta nga natay pagtuo, that's not the right thing. Faith can only be acknowledged not by bragging about it, but by being humble. Because humility always brings us to the ground. Now, if you study the word, Humility, it comes from the word humus. And what is humus? That's soil. That's the mud. No? And where were we taken from? When we, where we were created? We were taken from out of the dust, from out of the soil. And so our faith should also be grounded, be founded on the very source from where we came from. Because by acknowledging without God's blessings without God's breath or ruah, we will still be just soil. We will just be simply mud. We will just simply be dust. But because of God's gracefulness and great, and, and great kindness, we became a living being. We become human beings. But our human beings should be grounded on the fact that it is through this that God's blessing may abound through us. And he has given us the earth as our inheritance to develop. That's why ground, being grounded is always a context of the proper expression of the faith. We don't need to brag about our faith. Once we do it, we fail. Or we are falling into somewhere. But let us always be courageous enough strong, grounded, and well-founded in our faith, despite the many trials, because the Lord would always say, ha, ingana ka, mas maayo pa to siya. No? And the greater the challenge would come into our lives. But then, it's another thing to constantly be aware of the challenge, but embracing the challenge and sharing it with our brothers and sisters is another story actually gives color and dimension to what the faith is all about, to what the faith we profess is all about, and to what and how God has loved us, even to the point of giving up his son for us, so that we will be taken out of the dust and be lifted up to where he has destined us to be, in his presence and in his kingdom. Amen.